Welcome back to The Big Show. It's Belfield on Broadway. Back with a legend... One of my favourite people, uh, Carol Shelley, how are you? I'm very well. I'm just sitting here being a legend. <laughs> I'm very well, thank you. Alex. This is like DJ Vu, really. We did this a year ago, and I'm going to ask you all the same questions in the same order. I apologise in advance. That's perfectly all right. D I like DJ Vu. That's, I'm, I may steal that. <laughs> It's not bad, is it? No. Listen, I was in to see you again last night. This is a yeah. year after I last saw you. That's about 10,000 performances. And you still looked as fresh as a bean. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing well. I'm loving it. It's not exactly an exhausting role. Um, I, just, I love the old girl. She's, she's just a... She's, she's a hoot. <laughs> what you bring to it is great warmth. And I think I said this last time. And humour. Because actually, she's quite a tragic character. She could be a tragic character. I don't... She doesn't see herself as tragic. Therefore, she isn't. She, she is... There's a, there's a childlike quality about it. I mean, without making fun of her, I mean, she's technically bonkers and is not aware. <laughs> and that's the best place to be, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> speaking from that standpoint, Yes. <laughs> It is. It, it gets you off a lot of hooks. <laughs> <laughs> and when we see you, you're obsessed with pasties. What is it with you and pasties? Food. <laughs> food, you know, and s food secreted away. I think it's. All, I think her life is all about food. This is a great show. And what's interesting, I said to you last time, is that the Americans get it. And that wasn't necessarily going to be the case. I mean, it's done with the Northeast accent. So that's yeah. a problem for a start. Yet there's a lot of gags in it they get, which is nice. Well, I think what's good is, and Stephen was very, very cautious about it being too accented, too Northeast. He wanted it to be different so that people would really focus and listen, but not to the point where they couldn't understand. And tell me about you, because you've been in everything. I mean, most famously on Broadway in Wicked. You're from the UK. I mean, this isn't an American accent, is it? No. <laughs> I mean, I can I can turn it on for you, but I've been here an awful long time, 46 years. Uh, <laughs> sort of semi-boring. I was at ballet school for most of the time because I wanted to be a dancer. Luckily, God offered me a longer career by breaking my foot. And, um, well, he didn't actually break my foot. I broke my foot. But it was his way of saying, would you like a longer career? So I, I love your optimism. I mean, other people would be depressed by that and totally give up. Oh, and I, go was, I was at the time. I was deeply depressed. <laughs> but, you know, I've had an awful long time to get over it. <laughs> Were you always a character actress or did that come later? Um, it's come in, in my old age. It has come to me. But I think that I I enjoy being ca characters now. I'm trying to think of the last time I was myself uh, and I can't remember because I, for that, I think the last 12 years, um, 12, 14 years, I really played middle-aged to old <laughs> ladies and had much more fun. Which is incredible, really, because you're in your early 40s now. Ah! Do you find it difficult ah! being a grandma? <laughs> <laughs> Sweet child. <laughs> you make it very real, because before you, there's this big opening number, which is incredible and beautifully mm -hmm. staged. But then you bring it right back down to proper acting. Well, it's nice to hear you say so. I can't really, I mustn't really think about it along those lines. But I hope I'm, I hope I'm faithful to the piece. Can we take your big song? I'm going to have to put about 700 bleeps in because you've heard about BBC Compliance. No, I haven't. Tell me. Well, this is a thing now where we have to be very careful or I get fired. And there's a few Ooh. naughty words in this, aren't there? Well, there's only one or two, really. Oh, no. Trust me, the BBC will find at least eight or nine. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Let's take the song now. We're back with uh, one of the big stars on Broadway, let alone just here at Billy Elliot. We'll talk to Carol next. But this really is in a league of its own, partly because of the talent within it. I mean, the kids just blow you away every time you see it. Wonderful. Oh, God, they are just... I love the little girls. They're hysterical. But the boys, the Billy boys, just blow me away. And they've worked so hard, and I, I have such admiration for them. Do you kind of feel you get an easy ride at the end of the day? I mean, you only have to sing one big number and then sit there and smile and look gorgeous through the rest of the play. Yes, I have got it pretty easy, haven't I? I mean, it's hard being gorgeous and it's unfair. However, somebody's got to do it. How does it feel when you've got your big number and the orchestra's behind you and the pin focus is on you and for that moment, Broadway's about you? Lovely. <laughs> Smashing. Um... No, I, I don't even think about it. All I really think about is not forgetting the words because it that 
the beat behind the song is so inexorable. I don't know whether I get back in again. Mm. And even after a year, there is a worry that you could forget. More so, more so. But the be- the more you know it, and the longer you do it, the easier it would be to just drift off to somewhere else. What are the moments for you in the show where you still enjoy watching it, even though you've seen it 10 million times? Um, well, there are two places that I listen to it. I listen to Billy and Michael doing their big number together, which I just adore. And then the other one that I really love is Billy's ballet with his older self. What's the rehearsal process like? Because when you create something like this, I mean, it's a huge beast to get on stage, isn't it? Uh, Well, we had a very long uh, rehearsal process because at the time we were rehearsing three Billys and they were each being given equal time. So we would rehearse a scene and we'd do it three different times with three different billies and uh, that stretched it out I can tell you something happened last night which nobody else would have noticed but a hat fell off one of the policemen during one of the big numbers oh, yeah. and the way they got the hat back was just so meticulous one of the young girls just picked it up without anybody noticing and got it back to him and he carried on oh, that really is a sign of a true pro even at 10 or 11 I couldn't believe it oh she's looking for a five dollar bonus <laughs> Is that what it is? Yeah, probably. (laughs) (laughs) And as for the show itself at the end, when you get your moment to shine with the applause, is there anything else like it on Broadway? I think there's even a different feeling to Wicked because the kids just change the mood in the theatre, don't they? They really do. Absolutely. But when little Billy is up in the chair being held by the guys and he yells, finish, the audience just goes ape. It's it's, it's wonderful. It's It's wonderful. And is it still a nice show to be in because it's number one and sold out and you can't get a ticket and it's expensive and everybody loves it? Yes, all of the above. (laughs) Nothing worse than being in a flop, is it? Uh, No, and touch wood, I haven't been in one for quite some time. Well, it's your genius, you see. With you being in your mid-40s and able to play these senior (laughs) roles, you do it so well, it adds a touch of glamour. Oh, a touch of glamour, does it? (laughs) Lovely. Well, uh, I shall go on doing that then. (laughs) Congratulations on being you. I'll talk to you in 12 months' time when you'll be sat in that exact same position. All right, Alex, you're on. I'll buy the coffee.